According to data from the Innocence Project website, their clients who they exonerated have spent in total 3,874 years in prison for crimes they didn't commit. Race has played a huge role in wrongful convictions, with 58% of their clients being black, 33% white, 8% being Latina, and only 1% were Asian. 63% had been wrongfully convicted based on misidentification by eyewitnesses. 53% through forensic science techniques, including giving false and misleading testimonies, which lied or exaggerated how the evidence was linked to the accused. A report released by the National Registry of Exonerations recorded that between 1989 through to 2022, a total of 3,284 people in the United States were exonerated, 1,226 of those were for murder, 585 for drug possession, and 357 for sexual assault. Glyn Simmons served the longest sentence in American history for a murder he never committed. He was released from prison in 2023 at the age of 71 after serving 48 years in prison just to be found innocent in the end. In this series, I am going to talk about cases of people currently incarcerated who may actually be innocent. If you enjoy this content, then please like and subscribe to see more weekly uploads. Trouser Square. My name is Linda Cardi, and I'm speaking to you from death row in Texas, in the United States. I'm sorry if I sound like a desperate woman. I am desperate. Because the British people may be my last hope. If they ask for my life to be spared, Maybe Texas will listen. Please listen and tell everyone you know. Please don't let me die here. It was the 16th of May, 2001, when Joanna Rodriguez and her husband, Raimundo Cabrera, were both laying in their bed with their three-day-old baby. Joanna and Raimundo both worked hard and had settled in America so they could have a better life. Suddenly, at 1 a.m., Three men kicked their front door down and made their way into the home. It wasn't until after the men left that a cousin, who was living in Joanna and Raimundo's, went to untie Raimundo, who was tied with duct tape and a telephone cord. They both then called the police. Detectives arrived to the scene and after speaking with Raimundo, he told them what had gone on. He said that as he, Joanna and their three-day-old baby were laying on bed, Three men with guns, wearing ski masks smashed their door down and started screaming at them for drugs and money, but because they didn't have any, all they had was $1,000 they had been saving up to buy a car with so they gave the men the whole amount of money. The three men then beat Raimundo with a pistol and tied him up. They then grabbed Joanna and their baby and fled the scene. Detectives sent the tape and telephone cord off for fingerprint testing while 22 detectives went around looking for witnesses. They knocked on a neighbor's door, Florence, and asked her if she had seen anything. That day, detectives were desperately trying to find 20-year-old Joanna and three-day-old Ray. When Florence called them to say what neighbor Linda Carty told her about being pregnant suddenly the day before the crime occurred, this caught their attention. They looked into her background and found that Linda Carty, a former primary school teacher, had been arrested in 1992 for auto theft and impersonating an FBI agent. In exchange for 10 years probation, she agreed to be a drug informant for the drug squad. She would buy heroin and hand it over to the DEA so they could constantly monitor the strength of street heroin and she would give them information on dealers. They found out Linda had been telling people she was bringing home a baby only one day before Joanna and Ray were kidnapped, so they brought her in to be interrogated. As detectives are questioning her back at the police station, she's denying knowing anything about the kidnapping. Investigators then bring in Linda's husband to talk to her, and they find out that Linda told him she was giving birth to his baby that day. But although she has no involvement and doesn't know anything about what happened to Joanna and Ray or who they even are, she said she has a feeling where there might be an offer to drive investigators to where she believed they were, whilst claiming she didn't have anything to do with the crime, of course. So, Linda got in the car and directed the detectives on where to go until they soon pulled up to a house, 
which had loads of cars parked outside of it, including a number of Linda's cars. Police then arrested three men that were inside the house where Joanna and Ray were found and brought the three men in for questioning. Today's date is May 17, 2001, 3.40 a.m. How you became friends with or how you met an individual by the name of Linda. Linda. So, kid and lady. She wanted us to dispose of the body. To dispose of Linda says how shocked she is that detectives believe she was involved. That you'll be getting a baby in the several days? Have you told anyone that? I didn't tell anybody I'm getting a baby in those several days. You haven't told anybody that around the apartment complex? No, I said I should be um, having a baby. I didn't say I'm getting a baby like I'm buying a baby or stealing a baby. That's not what I told anybody. During her trial, they told of how Linda told her husband and her neighbor she was having a baby that day, and an employee from a storage business was told by her how she had just given birth, but her baby was back at her house. An inmate who shared a cell with Linda when she was awaiting her trial, testified that Linda had asked her to write a letter for her, so it wouldn't be in her own handwriting. So the inmate agreed, and was told to write on the letter that two men had stolen the baby and her cars and put the baby in her car just to set Linda up as they had a grudge against her. When she finished writing what Linda told her to write down, she said to sign the letter from Oscar. Prosecutors said she had kidnapped the three-day-old baby just so her husband wouldn't leave her, but Linda claimed she was conveniently being set up all because she was a drug informant. On the 21st of February, 2002, she was found guilty and sentenced to death. Hearing the verdict, Joanna's family all hugged each other, and her husband said, we feel better that there's some justice. It helps me a lot. I can rest a little better. Soon after, Raimundo took his son back to Mexico. What's really sad about this case is Linda Cardi's selfish actions and that Joanna only got to be a mum for three days before her life was snatched away. Because if I had done this, I would have taken my punishment. But I know, I know in my heart I didn't do it. But I don't have the resources, I didn't have anybody to help me. From, from what I'm, I was told, she spoke Spanish. She didn't even speak English. I don't speak Spanish. So there was no way for us to communicate. I either got too close or someone wanted um, to get rid of me. Are you completely innocent of this? Yes, crime? I am. Yes, I am. And I would swear on my mom and my daughter's life. Yes, I am. And that's where I feel as though my government abandoned me because they should have been able to look at this case and look at all these discrepancies and see that there's something wrong with this case, you know, so yeah. I'm not scared of dying. I just don't want to die because I'm going to be a pawn for somebody else. Oh, I fell between the cracks. I don't want to die like that. You need to pay attention and you need to come and have more interaction here with me. You need to do more. I still matter. It doesn't matter which side of the rung I'm on. I still matter.